So I get this question very often. How do I enter or start a career in digital marketing without any experience? This can come from new graduates, but also from people who are already working, maybe in a different profession, but they want to change careers and go into digital marketing, change careers and go into digital marketing. So I found myself repeating the answer very often. So I thought I'd share the answer in this video for anyone considering this question. So my first suggestion is start the right way. So what do I mean by that is, let's, let me use this example of if you're going to play the guitar, there are two types of students. The first student is one that can learn a song by memorizing hand positions by watching a YouTube video or a YouTube uh, tutorial or a lesson. The second type of student is one that learns how to read, read tablature or tap, uh, guitar tabs uh, so they can figure out songs on their own as well as creating their own music. Now, studio number one, if they practice it enough, they can probably learn how to play one full song, you know, just from watching a video. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that because I do that too, but I wouldn't necessarily consider them a guitarist just yet. Now, studio number two, I would consider more of a guitarist over studio number one because studio number two uh, can understand how to read music and understands notes and understands notes and possibly even start to understand music theory. So it's a slight nuance, but the results are vastly different. And that goes the same for digital marketing. So I see a lot of newbies who are wanting to enter into digital marketing and they jump right into learn how to run a Facebook ad campaign or how to run a Google ads campaign. Now, if I was hiring a digital marketer and a candidate only had completed a course on, you know, how to set up a Facebook ads campaign, um, they're probably not somebody I would consider hiring. Now, why is that? Is because they only know how to use one tool. They're kind of like a one trick pony. You know, th it, what it tells me is they may not have the foundation in marketing principles and concepts. You know, what if Facebook ads you know, go the way of Yahoo and Netscape. Now, some of you are probably too young to remember what Netscape is, um, so, I'll let, um, so I'll let you Google that up. But really, that's why I suggest always start your career on the right way, and that's understanding the foundational principles and concepts of marketing and human behavior. Because marketing is not knowing how to set up ads or a campaign in Facebook or in Google, or whether it's coming up with a snazzy slogan. Marketing is understanding how to leverage and appeal. So if you were to start learning the fundamentals, uh, fundamental principles and concepts of marketing, this is where I would start. And this is where I tell uh, pretty much everyone where to start is by I, I share these resources. So the first one is uh, Scientific Advertising by Claude Hopkins. Now, even though this book was written in the early 1900s, the principles and co concepts that Hopkins writes about still hold true to this day. And in fact, actually, most savvy digital marketers will actually say this is one of the books that they learn from. Now, the second resource, and uh, this is probably one of the most important marketing and copywriting books you will ever find. Practically all of the successful marketers and digital entrepreneurs uh, that you see out there right now will have read this book.
So the next book that I would usually recommend to people to start with is Common Sense Direct and Digital Marketing by Drayton Bird. Now, I've had the pleasure of hiring and working with Drayton and his associates in the past. And, you know, even if you're on his email uh, newsletter list, just studying his emails and the way he writes, you can learn a lot more uh, than any other marketing textbook, you know, from a university. Um, so you can see here, he actually literally wrote the book on direct response marketing. So this is actually a great book. It's one that I have in my own library as well as a hard copy. Um, so definitely recommend uh, Drayton's book as well. Uh, I, did, I don't think I mentioned this before, but um, I'll also include links to these books uh, in the description below as well. The next resource I want to share is the 8020 Sales and Marketing book by Perry Marshall. Perry Marshall is one of my most revered quote unquote mentors. His thinking and strategies are practically next to none. Uh, it's absolutely high level thinking and it'll it'll reshape everything that you know about sales and marketing and business in general. Uh, while he was, he originally was known as, or started off as the Google Ads guy, uh, he's actually much more than that. His 80-20 sales and marketing book is an absolute must-have uh, for any entrepreneur or digital marketer um, to have on your bookshelf. The, the next resource I want to share is The Boron Letters by Gary Halbert. Now, if you talk to any direct response copywriter, you'll most likely eventually hear the name Gary Halbert. Uh, the Boron Letters is actually a compilation of letters and newsletters that he wrote to his sons uh, while he was sitting in prison. Uh, in these letters, he shares and distills everything he knows about marketing, copywriting, and creating a business if he had to start from zero all over again, uh, which he did have to do. So this is actually a great resource as well, a great read. The next resource is a book called Ogilvy on Advertising by the famous David Ogilvy. Now, back in the heyday where when Madison Avenue advertising agencies, um, you know, was the the titans of marketing and advertising, uh, David Ogilvy is an advertising and marketing icon. Uh, I don't believe agencies these days are anywhere near where they used to be. Uh, as they've simply kind of diverged away from the fundamental principles that David Ogilvy followed. But luckily for you, you can still learn from Mr. Ogilvy in his famous book, Ogilvy on Advertising. Now, so I've shared already, uh, I've already shared a few resources and books for you to start with. So only after you learn the fundamentals from the resources that I've just mentioned, then you can decide to go ahead, you know, do uh, the free certification courses from Google for their Google Ads platform. Uh, you can also go through Facebook's uh, uh, online training for their ad uh interface as well. Uh, if you want to get certified on Facebook though, I believe there is a fee for it. There is no, it's not free. And like I said, the mistake that most new people entering digital marketing make is that thinking that if you go through Google's free certification or Facebook's training, uh, you'll, you, you come out thinking that you're a digital marketer because but that is actually a mistake because those courses are actually quite basic and they do not actually like teach you actual fundamentals. They're, they're mostly trying to get you to learn how to use their platform, uh, which is constantly changing on a week weekly basis. So this is why I don't suggest starting there. I, I always suggest people start with the fundamentals. So just to get you started before you actually get a chance to get your hands on any of the books that I mentioned above, uh, I'll share a few of the core concepts and principles that I believe everybody should should know at least um, when, when going into digital marketing. So the first concept uh, that I would suggest people start with is taking the time to do a deep and comprehensive research into your ideal customer profile or uh, sometimes people call it customer avatar. Now I cannot stress this enough. This is really where all successful marketing starts 
but most people don't take enough time or go deep enough here, right? Because people are really in a hurry to launch right into a campaign. So don't make this mistake. Take your time, do the actual research and get a real detailed uh, profile of who you're really targeting. Uh, if you want to learn my specific process for doing a deep dive into understanding your ideal customer profile, uh, just check out one of the links below in the description for uh, how I do it. Uh, the second concept is understanding the fundamental concepts and principles allows you to create a great campaign. So no matter what marketing channel, which is uh, Facebook ads and Google ads, those are all marketing channels. So, you know, what if one of those channels disappears or what if you get your ad account banned or closed down, which happens to a lot of people, then what do you do, right? If all you know how to do is set up a campaign in Facebook ads or Google ads, uh, you'll be screwed if you don't know if you get if you can't use that channel anymore. That's why understanding the fundamental concepts and principles um, is so much more important. Okay, so now you're armed with some digital marketing knowledge, okay? But reading and knowing some stuff about digital marketing doesn't make you a digital marketer just yet. See, the way I see it is digital marketing is performance-based, or at least it should be. That's a, simple, that's a simple way of knowing whether someone is good at it or not, is really asking, well, what kind of results can you achieve? And for people who don't have any experience in digital marketing, how do you get experience in this case if no one will hire you without experience, right? It's the classic chicken and the egg conundrum. So my simple answer is to create your own experience. So. Digital marketing has the advantage over other careers in that you can easily create your own experience. And you might actually find, you might discover that if you do well, you may not even want to work for somebody else. You actually probably want it for yourself. Okay, but anyways, so here's how you can create your own work experience. The first way is use your own money and run a campaign selling affiliate products. So this is affiliate marketing, right? where you sell uh, and promote someone else's product in exchange for getting a percentage of each sale that you generate. Uh, so for example, you can head over to clickbank.com, Clickbank uh, which is one of the mo more popular and one of the larger affiliate marketplaces. You can set up a free account there, pick a product or uh, that you want to start promoting and just get started right away. Um, another place you can start with is shareasale.com and again you can set up a free account there and start promoting products there. Uh, with shareasale though I think you need to get approval for a lot of the products but you can find a product um, that might have an auto approval process um, so you can get started uh, quickly. Okay so that's one way using your own money. The second way is if you don't have any money to spare to run some kind of campaign offer to run a campaign for someone where they pay for the ad spend but you offer your service for free for a specific period of time okay so you want to be doing this for free free for forever um, so you offer to set up and manage the campaign in exchange for some experience uh, where they cover the ad spend though and and maybe in exchange for a reference or testimonial for your work so obviously you'll need to be you'll need to perform well uh, in order to get that reference right but that these are a couple of to get, uh, create your own experience. Okay, so my next tip for you is, as you run marketing campaigns, you want to document everything that you're doing. So you want to document what's working and also what's not working. So don't, don't worry too much if you have a campaign that bombs, okay? No marketer bats a hundred or a thousand. The main thing is to figure out what lesson you can learn from failed and unsuccessful campaigns as well as successful campaigns. Okay, You want to get into the habit of keeping a marketing journal. Uh, it could be digital or it could be in a pen and paper type of notebook. Uh, I like to use Evernote um, so I can access it anywhere. But the main thing is to have a place that you document uh, your campaigns and what's working and what doesn't work. Okay, so let's say you've started getting results from your campaigns now. OK, 
Okay. Now, a savvy employer or business owner or a digital marketing uh, head of digital marketing uh, executive is going to be focused on these particular uh, what I call key performance. I call key performance indicators or KPIs. The first one is how much sales or how much revenue did you generate from your campaigns? The second KPI would be how many customers or how many orders did you bring in from your campaigns? Now, I understand in some cases you may not necessarily have access to these this particular detail. Uh, the next one is what is the average order value or AOV you're generating from your campaigns? And finally, what is the return on investment or ROI? Or what is the return on ad spend or ROAS? These are really the the main drivers of a profitable campaign. Uh, but the thing is, what I've noticed is that not all uh, employers or business owners or a department head for marketing is going to be using these type of metrics. Um, some of them might tell you, tell you, oh, I want to know what your cost per lead is or uh, how much marketing spend have you been in charge of or managed. Uh, to me, those are actually metrics that are what we call vanity metrics. They don't actually drive profitability for a business. Okay, so, like, so what do I mean? Is that why I don't really care for manage, how much marketing spend you've managed? Is you can manage a marketing spend of three million dollars per day, but if you're not, if you're only generating five hundred thousand dollars in sales from three million dollars in ad spend, um, you know, telling somebody that you you manage three million dollars in ad spend is is really not telling anybody how good you really are, right? So that's kind of what I mean. So the next thing I want to share are is what are the characteristics of a great marketer? Okay. So from my own experience in hiring digital marketers and hiring people in general, uh, here's what I've distilled as characteristics important to a digital marketer. So the first marketer. So the first thing is that you have a growth mindset. Okay, you don't know everything, and you're constantly learning. Okay, especially in digital marketing where things are changing constantly. Okay, um, the next characteristic is always be testing. Okay, in marketing. Nobody knows the answer until you test. And really the answer is based on the results or based on the data, okay? Which leads me to the other characteristics, which is being data oriented, okay? Data tells you the answer, not guessing, nor some textbook, you know, what they say, this is what you should expect or whatever, um, especially not past results for a different business, okay? That is a very common mistake. What worked for one business or one campaign or one product may not get you the same results for a different business or a different product, okay? Even if it's in the same industry. Finally, the final characteristic is that you're also focused on what matters most, not vanity metrics. So what I mentioned uh, in the previous lesson. Um, so like I said, focusing on ad spend or the number of leads or your cost per lead, those are not necessarily the driving metrics for a business. You want to know what the right metrics are to measure and to report on. So I'll give you an example. So why I don't really necessarily look at the number of leads you can generate. Because what if all of the leads, even if you're generating a million leads per day, if none of those million leads turn into a customer, a paying customer, Generating a million leads per day is meaningless to a business, right? Your leads, those leads aren't paying for your salary or everybody else's salary. So that's kind of what I mean. Okay, so the next tip I want to share with you is that you want to keep sharpening that ax. What do I mean is that digital marketing is constantly changing landscape. And there are so many so-called quote unquote gurus in this space. There is a ton of noise. So who should you listen to or who should you follow to keep learning the right stuff? Well, here, let me just share with you some of my favorites. So the first one uh, I would suggest people follow is Perry Marshall at uh, perrymarshall.com. 
uh, and I've mentioned his book as well, the 80-20 Sales and Marketing book. Um, Perry's stuff is really great for high-level marketing strategy, strategies and concepts. The next one is Justin Brooks AdSkills.com and uh, his Daily Edge email newsletter. Uh, this his stuff, Justin's stuff is just great for like paid traffic lessons. Um, the next one is MarketingExamples.com. Um, if you're on Twitter, he's uh, Harry's actually quite active on Twitter as well. So he he does some really interesting uh, and great marketing case studies that he shares with everybody. The next one is Brian Dean's backlinko.com and his email newsletter. Uh, it's He does really great content for SEO and content marketing. And finally, to follow digitalmarketer.com uh, from Ryan Dice. Uh, that is, his stuff is great for, you know, just general marketing, um, overall digital marketing. So they cover a lot of different topics within digital marketing. So that's a really, these are really some of the great places to start and to keep your ax sharp, sharpened. So I hope this video has helped you uh, give you a starting point for a career in digital marketing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if this video has helped you in any way with your digital marketing career, please also let me know through the comments as well. If you enjoyed this video or found this video useful, I hope, and you want to have more videos like this, then just hit the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this in the future.